Bernie Sanders and the minimum wage. Let's have a look. Good afternoon, everyone. Florian Heiser here, and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. I've got my stein of coffee for lunch, and I thought we'd have a look at this article about Bernie Sanders. Now, he's a presidential hopeful in the United States for 2020, and he's an advocate for a minimum wage or an increase to the minimum wage in the US. Now, I know this isn't Australian news, but I think it's topical and we can relate it to just the minimum wage we have in Australia and a few other things. So Bernie Sanders campaign announced it would cut hours to pay staffers the $15 minimum wage. Now, this is from Fox News, so it's going to have a understandable bias, but you know, he's advocating for a $15 minimum wage, saying it's, you know, a living wage, we've got to do this, the standard political response you'd expect. And he wasn't even paying his own staffers $15 an hour. So, Democrat presidential candidate Bernie Sanders announced this weekend he will cut staffers' hours so they can effectively be paid $15 an hour minimum wage prompting mockery from critics who said the move is more evidence that Sanders' plan, plan to raise the national minimum wage is hypocritical and would only lead to less work and more unemployment. So, the Washington Post first reported last Thursday that Sanders' field staffers were upset that Sanders championed a $15 minimum wage on the campaign trail and made headlines for rallying against major corporations who pay starvation wages even has his own employees made poverty wages so there you go in response sanders told the des moines register he was very proud to lead the first major presidential campaign with unionized workers but also bothered that news of the internal strife had spilled to the media well of course he was of course he was um, the self-described socialist candidate said junior field officers earned roughly 36000 per annum in salary with employer paid health care and sick leave, but he acknowledged that their salary can effectively dip below $15 per hour if staffers work much more than 40 hours per week, which is common on presidential campaigns. So why wasn't he paying overtime? Why wasn't he paying overtime if they worked more than that? The solution is to limit the number of hours staff work to 42 or 43 each week to ensure they're making equivalent of $15 an hour, he told the registered. Okay, that's a lot of hours a week. That's more than a normal working week. Here in Australia, 38 hours is considered a normal working week, or maybe 37.5. I can't tell you off the top of my head because I've been a small business owner for as long as I can remember, and these hours don't apply to you. Particularly if you're a YouTuber as well, they don't apply to you. You just make, you know, create stuff as you go. You don't pay attention to time. It's probably one of the reasons why I started my own business, because I hated filling out timesheets. So it does bother me that people are going outside of the process and going to the media. Oh, oh no, that is really not acceptable. It is really not what labor negotiations are about. <laughs> it's improper. Oh, come on. Wow. wow. How, how can a socialist with a unionized workforce not appreciate his workers using the media to to advocate for change how oh boy it this is just hypocrisy just ludicrous hypocrisy he's not presidential leadership i would say if if he got in charge of the us i we're definitely living in a, a fantasy world or something insane is happening he went on to say that the union contract not only provides pay of at least 15 dollars an hour it also provides i think the best health care benefits uh, that any employer can provide for our field organizers. Reactions from commentators and lawmakers was unsparing. For the first time in his life, socialist Bernie Sanders practices economics. And buddy, the results are hilarious. Um, why won't a millionaire Bernie, Bernie Sanders, who owns three homes, instead of cutting hours, pay his staff a living wage? Well, yeah, shouldn't they be paid? Shouldn't they be paid overtime if they're working above the normal hours per week i mean honestly shouldn't they or given time in lieu why doesn't he give them give them time in lieu at that rate so they can take extra holiday texican republican rep dan crenshaw lambasted the discord in this uh, sanders campaign which has been struggling in post-debate polls as beyond parody so does this fall under the category of hypocrisy irony or poetic justice he asked 
all three can't make this stuff up so yeah i mean i'll sh link to this article and you can go through it at your leisure but i thought what will you know this is a good starting point to talk about the minimum wage so let's have a look at this little model here and this is how economists simplify the economy to to explain things and get an understanding of it and we'll look at the supply and demand of labor as an example so you've got two two lines here on this little chart you've got the demand for labor which is the blue line which you know here it is and you've got the supply for labor on the red line on this axis we have wages and on this axis we have number of workers now what happens is in the market by itself it'll reach equilibrium an equilibrium wage where the wage that's being paid is in equilibrium with the demand for labor so it sorts itself out and you see that happening often in the economy when wages rise because there's more demand for labor and supply reaches a certain point depending on what profession you're in you know that can change it just changes if you know when there was a mining boom there's a demand for certain engineering professions so the demand drove up and then that adjusted the wages until the curve reached equilibrium again that's how it adjusts there's more demand so say this this blue we'll just say an argument demand goes up there's more demand for engineers so that means the equilibrium wage goes up for them reaches a higher point there at a high so their wage has increased by this amount that shows you just how the market works and it works the same thing as well if it's in you know going down the demand for it is down less the equilibrium will be less okay that's just the ebb and flow of the economy what's happening in different industries and those type of things so this is a simplification of it but it's a good way just to understand what's happening now when you have let's say an equilibrium wage of ten dollars and you introduce a fifteen dollar bernie sanders wage what that happens is that pushes up the minimum wage so you can't go below it so the economy the market can't reach this equilibrium point so that means the difference between here and here is your unemployment rate so you know you've got we can have a look here you can see here this is um going from five dollars hourly rate up to six dollars and in this diagram over here to the left which you can't see i'll just move it over you can see here that pushes the wage up and here's the labor supply and labor demand and you've got the unemployment between the two so that's why you'll often hear economists talk about a natural unemployment rate where there's a point where there'll always be a particular unemployment i'd, I'd like to think of it as inefficiencies that we you know install in the economy to ensure certain minimums are met or certain criteria are met you know like a dead loss by having this this 15 dollars minimum wage now businesses will respond to it differently some people will ignore the law like we're seeing with all of these australian um, restaurateurs that are coming up but it'll also increase the cost of things so before we have a look at a really interesting um, index for purchasing power in different countries i thought we'd look at this article it's it's from 2016 but let's just have a look at the how australia's minimum wage compares to other countries okay and this is the fair, fair work commission we'll have a look here i'll just jump down so australia uh, based on from 2016 it's 1770 per hour was the average the minimum wage or how the wage um yeah how the minimum wage compares to other countries the united kingdom equivalent is 1466 per hour new zealand is 1422 france is 1498 germany 1371 canada between 1045 and 1381 the united states ten dollars japan 10 mexico 550 czech republic 330 china wow brazil per, oh per month sorry and in india but this can just show you the cost of wages and, and you know if we look look back here at the australian economy how much of our exports are natural resources mining very little manufacturing and i think our minimum wage someone mentioned that in the comment has something to do with that as well okay so 
we can see there how Bernie's will result in unemployment. Minimum wages do. They always do. It's inefficiencies. It's the price you pay. But it will also have an impact on just the quality cost of living. Because we'll have a look here. Look at India, for example. Look at their minimum wage. And just remember a few of these countries. And we'll have a look at an index. Now, this is the Big Mac index. Now, if you've heard about it, you'll love it. This is from Investopia. And we'll just read this here. The Big Mac Index is a survey created by The Economist magazine in 1986 to measure purchasing power parity between nations using the price of a McDonald's Big Mac as a benchmark. Purchasing power parity is an economic theory which states that exchange rates over time should move in the direction of equality across national borders in the prices charged for an identical basket of goods. In this case, the basket of goods is a Big Mac. So key takeaways, you know, the the Big Mac index was, was created to measure the disparities in consumer purchasing powers between nations. The burger replaces the basket of goods traditionally used by economists to measure differences in consumer pricing. The in index was created, it was tongue in cheek, but many economists say it's roughly accurate. So yeah, it was created as a bit of a joke, but it's actually pretty useful. According understanding the Big Mac in index, according to PPP theory, any change in the exchange rate between nations should be reflected in a change in the price of a basket of goods. One of the key insights of the Big Mac index is that a basket of goods in one country can rarely be precisely duplicated in another country. For example, an American basket of groceries and a Japanese basket of groceries are likely to contain very different products. A Big Mac though is always a Big Mac, allowing for slight local differences in ingredients. The editors of The Economist the editors of The Economist stressed that the index should not be taken too seriously. Bergenomics was never intended as a precise gauge of currency misalignment, merely a tool to make exchange rate theory more digestible, an article wrote. Nevertheless, the Big Mac index has become a global standard for price comparison. The web state uh, Statistica.com, for example, uses it to track local purchasing power internationally, revealing, a, revealing that a Big Mac is relatively pricely in Switzerland, while people in Azerbaijan, Egypt, and uh, Moldova are getting a bargain. So they're going to some examples here, but let's have a look at, you know, this is a map showing just how many uh, Big Macs, or sorry, McDonald's are in the world. So we can use it to compare the purchasing price of different countries, you know, when they got it. So we were lucky here in Australia, we got it, Europe did in the 70s. Then New Zealand, Brazil. Okay, so, how many burgers can you get for 50 US dollars? And this is from 2016, so it's, it's still useful. In India, which is a chicken burger, understandably, you get 30. So I don't know if we should really look at them, but still. Hong Kong and the Ukraine, you can get 23. Malaysia, 21. China, 20. South Africa, 20. Indonesia, 20. This is making me hungry for Big Macs, even though I don't like them anymore. You get 19 in Russia. 18 in Saudi Arabia, Philippines, and Mexico. You can see the different costs of them here. Because you've got to think, just the process of getting a Big Mac, or you know, you need to rent a place, all the goods, and material, everything, the labor. It's not going to be that different in the different countries. Latvia, you can get 16. South Korea, you can get 15. Czech and Turkey, 14. We're going 13, so it's going down. Costa Rica, New Zealand, Japan, 12. I remember when I went to Japan, I had a a Big Mac and uh, they brought the Big Mac in a little bag and the drink in a little bag, everything in a bag and then in a little bag inside it as well. I thought it was quite unusual. Australia, you can get 10. 10 Big Macs for 50 bucks. So it hasn't gone up that much. USA, you can get 11. So Denmark, Brazil, Sweden. So there you go. Oh, sorry, it's from 2012. 2012. So it would have increased a little bit, but it's still interesting to see the differences. So let's have a look. Brazil, you can get eight Big Macs. And we'll have a, and India, you can get 30 chicken burgers. And then we'll look at just the differences in wages. So he, you know, the wage, India's got the lowest per day. Per day. And Brazil as well, you know, it's still pretty low. The minimum wage per month is 880 real. So just looking at the difference um, in purchasing power. So look here, we'll compare China to Australia, $1.70 to, to 393 and how many Big Macs will the Chinese get for that? Well, comparatively, for their 50 US dollars, they'll get they can get 20 Big Macs. We're in Australia, where we we can only get 10. So we can get, um, so they can get double the burgers we can for the same money. So is our 
is their wage half of ours? Is their wage half of ours? Well, no, it's not. So our wage is, oh, wait, we're going here. You can just see the differences in our minimum wage, how much higher it is. So it's $17. So it's 10 times, 10 times their, the Chinese wage pretty much, or the minimum at this time. And yet the purchasing power in China has them being able to buy twice as many burgers with the same US dollars as ours. And uh, it's interesting just to compare the purchasing price of the different ones, different countries. So, guys, what do you think? Do you understand how having this minimum wage this high, this high, could have an impact on our economy? Could be the reason why we've got unemployment rate at the Roy Morgan rate level of 9.2, ABS 5.2%. I wonder, I wonder, and our economy, you know, we're sitting at, we're a large, you know, fairly significant, simple exports. So we're going to be affected by global manufacturing. Now, if the US instigates a minimum wage, how is that going to affect us? That will result in more unemployment there. Will it affect their manufacturing? I mean, in some regards, in some regards, it may be a good thing for Australia because have a look here at our uh, export countries, destinations, you know, we're very high in China. So if that causes damage to U.S. manufacturing, you'd, you'd assume that there'd be more imports coming from overseas markets, particularly China, and that will be more demand for our raw resources that go over there and might help out Australia. And then we can buy more Big Macs. So <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. But guys, I thought that was interesting. I think it's, it's quite funny that Bernie has done this and we can learn a valuable lesson from it and just discuss some of these issues. Because guys, whenever a government implements or intervenes in any economic system, there's always going to be a negative. Always going to be a negative. And in this state, in this example, you're going to have a high minimum wage, but it'll flow onto a you know additional costs of things, but it also causes unemployment. And that's just the price that you have to pay. That's what you have to accept. So when there are people complaining about not being able to get a job, it could be because there's a minimum wage that prices them out of the market. You know, maybe a lot of people here in Australia would love to be have a job and just get the respect and be able to work for ten dollars an hour, but they can't because the ability to negotiate that wage has been stripped of them by this legislation. So it's something to be aware of and to understand the implications of whenever someone proposes a policy like this. It may sound good, but there's always another side to it, guys. And you know, the Big Mac Index is a bit of fun. And it's making me hungry for Big Macs. Anyway, guys, thanks for joining me for this episode. Please let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Like, share, and subscribe. And I'll talk to you next time. Bye for now.